Hey guys, hey, I'm back. Got something pretty important to report here, in my humble opinion. Uh, you see, this is the Discover satellite that records the solar data out at the Lagrange 1 point. This is a three day sample. What I want to point out is this gap. Now I've been monitoring for the last several weeks gaps about an hour or less. You can see the time up here. See that one starts at uh, 2252 UTC or thereabouts and 2353. So that's about an hour. And that's, that's been showing up on both ACE and Discover for the last couple of weeks. Similar type of gaps. But now, here we go. We got a big gap. 1223-2246 UTC until 1224-0708. That's close to an eight hour gap, seven plus hours. So, <laughs> excuse me. If you've been following me for any length of time, and I've been posting these under my videos, hypothesis number one, and then you have to click reply. Whoops. You have to click uh, well it's in there somewhere. This ain't cooperating. But anyway, we want we're dealing with this hypothesis number one, the big planet that was blocking the A satellite from between the A satellite and the sun gap got to be as much as nine hours and then it switched you can go and read that then the gap started appearing on the other side between the earth and, and the a satellite it was interrupting the data feed and then it went away after about a week or so no gaps then after well, like i said about a month ago started seeing some uh, One to our gaps here and there, but now check this out. Here's the uh, discovered tracking schedule. Gives you the uh, ground tracking stations. So that gap, and you should probably click this lower box on the right. Let me put it down to three days. I think I need to put it on three days. Hang on. Okay, I clicked it over to three days. So this is the Discover Ground Tracking Station blog for the last three days. These are all the different stations, and it shows that they were all online. When they're not online, it shows up down here on the No Data line. And like I said, it's been about an hour gap or so showing up or less on several spots but look at this one and if you click the box on the lower right you can see that the gap is 1223 December 23rd 2241 UTC all the way to today 1224 December 24th to 0700 UTC so that's actually an 8 hour and 19 minute gap that's not good guys uh, I would submit to you and check the hypotheses. You can go back and look at some of my earlier videos around October 16th, which is when the big planet that had been showing gaps on ACE all the way since I first started making videos back in January. And I kept wondering what the heck that gap was. And then it finally passed ACE and went away completely. So then I surmise that it has to be some type of a big planetary object that was blocking the data collection from the A satellite to from the Sun. Now, 
this is the L1 Lagrange point 930,000 miles in front of the planet there's like a saddle here where these ACE and the Discover satellites are parked and they pretty much rotate around this little saddle area so that's why it all, you don't always get exactly the same data and especially the same gaps from both ACE and Discover because they're in different positions relative to this big planet or whatever's causing the gaps of course so um so here's what I'm thinking we got up to a nine hour gap before it finally passed ACE on October 16th and read the hypothesis gives it the more detail about the gaps then reoccurring uh, between ACE and the earth tracking stations and the gaps got uh, around the same same length about eight eight hours so I think it was seven eight hours maybe not quite nine and so now then we didn't really didn't see any gaps until like the last month or so we can get in the gaps here and there for a couple of an hour or an hour, two hours at the most but they've been coming from on a pretty regular basis because there was a couple other objects or moons that come come along with this big planet when it passed ace according to the gap my gap theory but now we're getting an eight hour gap, eight hour, 19 minute gap. So, and we're, and I showed you that stuff yesterday. On the video yesterday, I showed you the octopus, as I called it, the interplanetary magnetic field lines. That's the most I've ever seen in front of the planet. Usually they just were like some little hair like follicles that came shooting out a little. But now look at them. They're way out. Like they're getting pretty close to, uh, linking up with planet earth so um, that's what I think is going on in these planets on MLSO I think these are planets these concentric circle rings this is yesterday's run on MLSO we got quite a few images it's actually an eight hour run here and these are I'll show you Looks like these are like two minute time lapses, 1902, 26, 1904, 13. So a little less than two minutes on the time lapse. And I'm leaving it play at full speed. And you'll see the number of frames. I think it's 125. Yeah. I'm leaving it play at full speed just to show you these objects. They're definitely bigger than when I first started showing you these Mauna Loa Solar Observatory images a few months back. You'll have to page back through my videos. Check it out. <clears throat> there was always a couple showing around in here, but now we got three for sure clearly showing four there. There's one there. But, and they're bigger. Look how big that thing is. And I wanted to let, let it keep playing through on full speed so you see that these things are actually on the move. And when I first started showing them, they didn't really appear to be moving too much. But now that they're closer to the planet, and closer to this solar observatory, it's picking up some movement even in this small eight hour, excuse me, time lapse window. Looks like there's something up here too that's been there for quite a while. Look, there's something there. They've sanitized the run. I mean, obviously they peeled back a few layers off of here because we would normally would see a bunch of objects flying through here as well, which I would submit to you would be the Nemesis debris field. <coughs> Here's Ace. Same deal up there at the L1 Lagrange point. But it's an older satellite. It went up in 1995 or 97, I think it was, 95. And the Discover satellite went up in 2017. So it's a much newer satellite. But they both do the same job. The Discover was put up there basically to replace ACE whenever ACE got taken offline. On ACE, the gap's only about three hours. So 
like I told you, they're in a different spots along this. This is the 24 hour ace, last 24 hours. Well, hang on. Let's put up three days. Maybe it'll show up better on the three days. No, we're still getting the same deal. And it's also, uh, it's also a data gap. So you click down here, ground tracking status. And there it is there. They give you a 48 hour plot and a six hour plot. It's not as sophisticated as that other discover site. And you don't get any times when you drag the mouse across here, but that's hmm, close to a three hour gap somewhere around there. So they're not the same. Gaps aren't the same showing on both places. But it's showing on Discover. So there's a big planet in between the Earth and the Discover satellite. And it's interrupting the uh, data collection from out here at the L1 Lagrange point. So I would submit to you, since it was nine hours at its peak, showing a nine hour gap on ACE, before it passed on October 16, 2018. And now it's up to an 8 hour 19 minute gap. And it's closer to Earth, obviously. As I showed you the, uh, been showing you. And you can see on Geospace, and the, this whole run, this run here isn't totally too remarkable on ISWA. But on Geospace, this is the last four hours or so, three, three plus hours. Look at all the different density waves coming through now, and also the bow shocks being pushed out pretty far past 15, getting close to 20 again. <clears throat> See all the different density waves coming through? That's uh, also in my hypothesis. I believe it's being slung at us from the, the magnetosphere, or magneto. Fear from the big planet doesn't quite show up as much on the velocity but uh, if you look at the watch here when it comes toward 13 watch this big hit oh well I didn't see it there and I'm running out of time so let's look at this real quick here's the big hit I was talking about this is a basically a, a density spike these colors pretty much and that's almost that's like the last image we're getting it showed up as a big hit on the uh, geospace so it ran a little bit past into 1400 UTC and this stops at 1343 which is pretty nice they're actually pretty well synced so let me drag this through for you pay attention to front of the planet we're getting a lot of gaps there but at when before we used to get, when they have the gaps, these polar cap field lines would get really dark and strengthened. I don't see it happening as much as before. I think the Earth's magnetosphere is getting weaker. But you could see the bow shocks being pushed out close to 20. And, that, and that's pretty much pressure there. There's no velocity shown, I believe. Judging comparing it to that geospace run so let me just drag it through for you real quick there's a couple little increments of missing time like 20 30 seconds here and there you can see there's some missing time there and it always goes into a big discharge when you get missing time dragging it through slow try to pick up there i think there's another spot of missing time in there you can watch the different waves coming through There's a whale, well, there's a hit there, 1740, and see there's missing time, that's like 30 seconds. So I got to drag it through pretty quick, I'm running out of time here. Here's Geos, here's the pressure on Geospace. And this is all getting data from this geosynchronous satellites orbiting around the Earth at the 22,236 mile mark. See the pressure is real low all around, so that's another reason that tells me that the magnetosphere is getting weak. Oh well, I'm running out of time. God bless, peace, and I'm out.